Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to BNB Anime. Let's hope we can do it first time this week. <laughs> uh, I certainly hope so. My mental capacity is not ready for us not to be able to do that. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm with you on that one as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm Blue, that's Brad. Today we're going to be discussing the first season of Attack on Titan because I'm pretty sure that all you guys out there that are listening to this are pretty much obsessed with this show. Um, and I feel like, I kind of feel like you're a bad anime watcher if you haven't seen it. I mean, no shade, but shade. I mean, AOT is pretty much the new generation's big three. It's pretty much yeah. that... Demon Slayer and My Hero is what I would consider the new gen big three. And I yeah, think most the, people yeah. would consider it that. For the big action, kind of mainstream, like classic anime vibe style. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if if you're not watching AOT and you're wondering what the hell the hype's about, the series is going to end in about four Four weeks, four and a half mm. weeks, because I think it ends on April 10th is whenever the final episode is going to air. Although I think MAPPA is going to be some sneaky bitches and pull some shenanigans of, I think there's going to be a film too. Mm. Okay. Because from everything that I've been reading, they, and the way that they're adapting the manga, they are adapting two chapters per episode. And from where the first, or sorry, where the last season has been now going two chapters per episode, it's going to end on chapter 130. Mm -hmm. So, and there's 139 chapters. And so nine chapters is technically enough for a feature length film, you know, right. like an hour and 45 ish minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's probably where they're going with this is MAPPA is going to stretch it out that one last little bit, rake in that <laughs> last bit of money, because I guarantee you AOT is going to go into the fucking theaters mm. and just rake in a shit ton of money. Probably not Mugen Train level by any means, but it's going to do well regardless. Yeah, I feel like a lot of anime studios are really grasping onto the international audience that has kind of sprung up since quarantine. I mean, obviously, we are long watcher watching like anime people are otaku vibe. Like we've been doing this a while, and I'm sure a lot of you guys listening have as well. That anime isn't a new thing for you, but I do know that it is a new thing for a lot of people that had a lot of time on their hands and they were stuck at home and they didn't have anything to watch and they kind of gone through all of the normal stuff. And so many people within the past couple of years have have really. Um, expose themselves to anime for, for either the first time or they've gone back to it from like watching it from their childhood and then now as an adult they're realizing that they, there's adult content as well um and uh and so i feel like there's a there's a new audience that wasn't as prominent as before or even like people might have been casual anime watchers but now they're like otaku vibes you know and because of that uh there's going to be more viewership and in, in 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 international audience and people are now kind of like begging to go outside and do outside stuff and and a lot of people that would consider themselves to have been introverts before the pandemic are now really <laughs> exposing themselves to extrovert behavior because everyone's got cabin fever we've been stuck inside for so long that going to the cinema and stuff sounds like a, such a good idea and and to do that with something that you've kind of revisited or just become a huge fan of um, is is a, a huge market right now. There's a huge market for that, and there's a lot of people that are are jumping on that bandwagon. So internationally, it makes absolute sense to to chuck a movie in there. I mean, might as well. Plus, we all saw the success of Mugen Train. Mm -hmm. Carrying on with that, we had the success of the latest My Hero film, which outgrows yeah. the other two, and I think it outgrows the other two combined. If I'm not Sailor mistaken, Moon did well too. Yep, Sailor Moon did well, and then. You've got JJK Zero, mm -hmm. which did well domestically in Japan and was then about to hit North American theaters in about two weeks. Mm. I'm curious to see how well that would do, considering the fanfare that Jujutsu Kaisen had in the anime community, especially yeah. globally, because JJK kind of took over the American scene of anime whenever it was coming out, especially in the latter episodes of the season. So mm -hmm. I'm very curious to see how that's going to go going forward but yeah aot it's still taking the world by storm regardless mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. So I uh, remember watching Attack on Titan I, I pretty quick after it first came out. I wasn't one of the first ones to jump on it, but I did watch it fairly early on. Um, because I remember it was kind of around that time when I was just getting back into anime um, and, and had kind of been introduced to it. And it was before I found sports animes. So it was like when I was watching kind of mainstream stuff because I was figuring out what I wanted to to watch. So then I kind of lost track of it for a bit. I mean, there was quite a bit of a break between seasons. And um, I discovered different kinds of animes and and haven't really revisited it again so this kind of was a nostalgia trip for me yeah i've so i've seen the first few episodes of attack on titan about as many times as i've seen the first few episodes of my hero and stone wars <laughs> yeah uh, dr stone fucking yeah. sao yeah. Yeah. like it's one of those animes that for some reason and it's very weird because aot being as graphic as it is, I mm. still consider it a beginner anime. Definitely for, yeah, I feel like it's a beginner anime for obviously adults and like teens. Um, I agree with you though. I feel like it's one of those ones that's so captivating right off the bat and so detailed and mysterious. Like there's a lot of mystery that you kind of get to work out with the characters or you're let in on secrets or like if you're you're good at picking up connections, you can figure out stuff before characters figure out stuff, but it's not blatant. So it's really captivating to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially I say the first season is very, very good at that because if you like they're they're I'm I'm trying to do this without spoilers, just in case. But like there's one main plot line that I think a viewer can spot pretty darn easily, but also not easily enough to where like some people are still gonna be surprised by it. Um but if you figure it out, then you're just sitting there going, figure this out the whole time while you're watching it, and it's really entertaining. Um, So I think it's one of those ones that is very interesting for people that don't really watch anime to get involved in because it really does draw you in, captures your attention and makes you feel like you're kind of part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Well, it's very much on the level of The Promised Neverland and how it has the ability to, by the time the first episode ends, you're captivated by it. Mm -hmm. Like It just lures you in. But also, as someone who has seen the first season multiple times, subbed and dubbed, Mm -hmm. Because whenever I initially watched AOT, I watched it subbed, or I'm sorry, dubbed. Because mm-hmm. it, I think I got back into anime in 2016, which is whenever I think the second season started airing. Mm-hmm. So I binged through it the first time dubbed and then got brought to my attention that the subbed was just a lot better. Mm-hmm. So therefore went that route, did that, watched it subbed. And then, like I said, it's been kind of one of those go-tos for me of any time somebody wants like a starting recommendation, I'm like, here you go. Mm-hmm. However, as someone who is completely caught up to the episode by episodes of season four right now, mm-hmm. watching through this now is a fucking trip. <laughs> the amount of foreshadowing that they give through this show is unreal. Mm-hmm. And also just little tidbits here or there that, like you said, you should be able to piece stuff together earlier on. Mm -hmm. But also, it's very sneaky with how they do some stuff. Like after we chuck on the spoiler chicken hats, Mm -hmm. I'll kind of talk about some of the bits here or there that I think kind of stood out to me. Not necessarily from later seasons, but stuff that was extremely foreshadowed just for the first season itself. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's a lot that can be discussed. Speaking of a lot of stuff that can be discussed, <laughs> we had a big thing happen this week that I'm sure you and I are both very enticed into wanting to talk about. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been excited to talk about this on the podcast because we kind of, we had our, our little thoughts of what may happen, but uh, I don't, neither of us expected this, so... No, definitely, definitely not. So for those that have been living under a rock in the anime community, Mm -hmm. Sony recently bought the just entirety of Crunchyroll from AT&T because AT&T is in massive amounts of debt and Mm -hmm. are trying to sell off some of their properties to get money. So Sony bought Crunchyroll for the tune of, I believe it was, what, $1.5 billion? Yeah, and Sony already owns Funimation. And so with the acquisition of Crunchyroll, you and I kind of had 
similar veins of either they were going to merge it into Funimation or potentially just try to run both? Yeah, so it was my thought that uh, it would be more beneficial for them to run them both side by side and then have... um, like connections between the two so they would have the two streaming platforms um because they kind of do different things in the sense that like crunchyroll feels more personal it feels more indie still like small company vibes even though it obviously isn't it gives off that impression um and it's still like kind of nerdy whereas funimation feels much more like a netflix or a big production company and i don't know why they they give off this different impression but it felt like that um And so we were talking about possibly that they might have uh, a dual subscription service or they would discount one from the other. They might combine merch stores or like Funimation would do strictly uh, dubs and then Crunchy would do subs or like uh, Funimation, like Crunchy has started to produce their own stuff. So maybe like Crunchy would do more of their like own creations and Funimation would just continue buying licensing you know we weren't really figuring out how it was going to be but we we had thought that they would run them simultaneously and they had started to do the thing where crunchyroll was having its own originals and even helping develop anime whereas funimation was having their own exclusive things although they never fully funded projects i think just say the tiger and the fish Mm -hmm. was probably the first like branch out on their own of trying to like originate any sort of property yeah however funimation is the reason it feels like the bigger more household name is because it is funimation has handled the distribution and production of everything english in the states and even a lot in europe and canada Mm -hmm. under like a different guise Mm -hmm. just because they do the dubbing for pretty much almost everything up until a certain point yeah yeah it's only really very recently that you've seen places like netflix start to do dubbing but even then it's it's netflix obviously isn't an animation service so they don't do anime strictly so we were talking about the idea that like because you know how like amazon had that lawsuit over being a monopoly despite the fact that there are sites like ebay and kijiji and stuff like that that do similar things but because amazon has such a large portion of the market and they they're slightly different from those sites um they had this lawsuit on their hands so we were wondering whether or not both of these services being owned by sony um has now created a, a monopoly in the english market of Or even just the dubbing market, really, because they do dubbings for, like, pretty much every language, or, well, a good portion of of the majority of the languages, for anime, because most of the stuff that comes out of Japan is only in Japanese, and they don't really dub in Japan. No, the most you'll get out of them is, like, closed captions, and Mm. then some, uh... Like, descriptive visuals and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But then Crunchyroll typically handles a lot of the subtitling and whatnot. And then Sony just came out and were like, hey, so listen, Funimation, that's just going to be entirely absorbed into Crunchyroll, Mm -hmm. which just threw us for a fucking loop. Because again, if you were to combine either of those into the other, you would have thought it would be Funimation just solely because of it being a household name. Yeah, I feel like uh, Crunchyroll has this um, trendiness to it especially since the pandemic or within the past few years, Crunchyroll is the one that like anime YouTubers, stuff like that, talk about the most. And it's kind of become like a a meme in itself, you know, like people know Crunchyroll because of that. But that's a new thing. Crunchyroll wasn't always like that. And even then, like the reason why it has that indie vibe to it is because it's kind of trendy. So it's not because that's so recent, it's not as reliable as Funimation that has all of these years of of backing, you know? Like, like how many animes have you watched where you know the Funimation opening before you watch the anime, right? Whereas Crunchyroll doesn't have that that years of history, but because of this new influx of viewers, I feel like the viewership on Crunchyroll is probably a fair amount higher, even though it doesn't feel like it would be. I think, if I'm not mistaken... Crunchyroll had a higher subscription rate than Mm. Funimation. Yeah. But also, this is just me personally, I feel like a lot of Crunchyroll's interface is a lot more user-friendly. Agreed. Rather than Funimation. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And that's all across the board from the website to the mobile phone and even the PlayStation apps and mm-hmm. whatnot seem to work better than Funimation. But also considering the licensing issues that Funimation has been having whenever they've been trying to produce the DVDs and whatnot for a lot of their newer shows and how they lost those licenses because of situations like ReZero mm. with their failures to actually be able to replicate those stuff in a physical format. I feel like that could also potentially be a reason just because of how they were falling behind. Now, don't get me wrong. I much prefer Funimation store to Crunchyroll store. A mm-hmm. lot of that because of pricing, because God, everything's so much fucking cheaper on Funimation. Mm-hmm. But overall, I think it's a good move. I mean, I hate to see Funimation go, but also I don't think they're going to fully phase it out. I know Funimation is not going to get any just like brand new content, mm-hmm. but I also don't see them fully getting rid of it either i think it's going to be there more as like a catalog like back catalog of stuff yeah i could see them changing the funimation brand into just being a dubbing and subbing entity so like you'll still see things on crunchyroll but they'll have the funimation intro because that's the company that subbed and dubbed them but they're not being shown up Funimation; they're being shown on crunchy you know so it's like they strictly become a translating service I mean, I could I could see that. And even if it's just to or even if it's just for the dubbing purposes, mm. because a lot of the Funimation voice actors are household names. Yeah. And we actually know that uh, a couple of uh, voice actors have recently just been hired by Funimation. So they're like, n- it's it's interesting to know that they're still hiring people despite phasing out the company so it's it the merger is is like i don't know how that's going to work or like if there's like i think it's probably funimation is still going to dub they're just going to dub and then like move it to crunchyroll you know i mean it seems like it's definitely more of a merger rather than like a hostile takeover (laughs) yeah so hopefully it kind of stays that way and Mm -hmm. the status quo kind of stays the same even if one application isn't being used as much yeah although that sucks for me considering how many people fucking mooch off my funimation now i'm glad i no longer have to pay for an extra subscription service not only that funimation's fucking more expensive than crunchyroll Mm. so but also that's more people that are going to try to mooch off my fucking crunchyroll now (laughs) I'm I'm an anime whore. Like everybody just gets all my stuff at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so basically what we're saying is if you have any Funimation merch, hold on to that because in 10 years or so it might be worth a bob or two. I mean, probably. Who yeah. who knows? Yeah. Um but yeah, I don't know. Let us know what you guys think about this. Do you think that there is a possibility for any kind of litigation being filed over a monopoly in the anime world or do you think that it's it's not going to to be that way. But I could definitely, I mean, I've spoken about this before, but I could definitely see, you know how like Netflix has Netflix kids? I could see there being like a Netflix anime <laughs> section because um, I'm I already like, there's there's a hole in, and in the market now for it. There's, they've, there's only one subscription service for anime now. <laughs> well, Netflix also had, I believe Netflix is the reason Mm. that we had the massive influx of new anime fans because in quarantine everybody just turned to netflix i mean think about how absurdly popular tiger king became just because they dropped it right at quarantine also animal crossing i don't think animal crossing would have been as much of a cult phenomenon as it was if it wasn't for covid there's so much there's so many factors that kind of took place at I mean, as a perfect storm for those involved, although inadvertently, to just be able to just take over and corner a market. And I feel like that's why anime's boom happened is because of COVID and everybody being stuck inside. So it's like you said, everybody was just kind of browsing and like, oh, we've already watched this. Ooh, what's this? Let's give this a try. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they're like us and have spent so much of their lives now watching anime yeah, well, and Netflix has a really, really good curation system. Like, they're very, very good at targeting what you've watched for recommendations. Like, they're, yeah, they're really, really good at getting you to stay watching Netflix, you know? 
Well, um, not only that, but their catalog of anime that they have is excellent. Yeah. Considering, I mean, they've got Demon Slayer, Toradora. The first season of Attack on uh, Titan. Yeah, well, I, they actually lost Attack on Titan, at least in the States. Hmm. But Naruto, Death Note, The Promised Neverland, Violet Evergarden. In Canada, I, they have all of the Ghibli films. Yeah, we got to use HBO here for that. <laughs> but even Bunny Girl Senpai, that kind of struck me out of nowhere, seeing that on Netflix or even a silent voice. Like, they just have such a massive catalog of yeah. really good stuff. Yeah. So I... it makes sense for that to, oh, they got Angel Beats and Anohana. Then, of course, Comey. Comey kind of took over my world this year. <gasps> also, Comey f- fucking comes out in a month. We get season two. I'm so excited. Shush. Netflix. Sorry, not you. <laughs> you are so excited. I, Shush. I I am going to leave that in and make it sound like no. you just insulted me. <laughs> no, Netflix started an auto playing something. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sure. I, I totally believe that. Also, really? I failed you. Did you? Oh, you didn't watch I, The Thing? I did not watch The Thing. Uh, uh, I'm not going to lie. Elden Ring has kind of crushed my soul, which is I why I'm kind see, of, yeah. yeah, we we kind of, you know, we skipped over the whole how our week is going because <laughs> I I can assure you, I almost broke a keyboard this week. Mm-hmm. I was I was so mad. Also, if it tells you how deaf my grandmother is, because I live... For those that are unaware, I live with my grandmother and kind of keep an eye on her. Mm. Well, I, I kid you not, I got so mad that I just all out punched my desk. Mm. And just one just really good, really hard smack. <laughs> Everybody that was in the Discord with me it was just like, Brad, are you okay? You I'm, good? Like, I'm fine. And yet Nana didn't hear a fucking thing. Gotta love grandma. These walls are paper thin. Yeah. Like, I can hear every single word that she says. You've edited these episodes. You can hear her fucking TV in the background of my shit before we noise cancel it. You know. Yeah. As well as Even I Even after we noise cancel it, I can hear it sometimes. Yeah. And it's pretty much the worst whenever I'm speaking because you can't, like, noise cancel out of something that's already there. Mm. So it's weird. I don't understand noise canceling. But anyway, back to the point. So I don't understand how the fuck she didn't hear that but whenever i say i slammed it discord has the ability to keep background noise from coming through discord picked it up that's how loud it was yep to where it couldn't ignore it but nope nope yeah but yeah elden ring has happened and i love every minute of it for those that are that are looking for a good excuse to get into the souls games do that do the thing (laughs) yeah no i've been just as as uh stressed i guess as you (laughs) Because you've got your fucking finals. Yeah, you, midterms. You have my most yeah. sincere condolences. Uh, thank you. I, I do appreciate. Um, yeah, no, I've got a still life painting due. And I don't enjoy still lives. Um, I very much like organics. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is is tricky for me. I think what, the, I mean, Brad, you've seen me do like painting streams and stuff, so you know. But I mm-hmm. don't like guidelines. I just take a thing and paint, you know. So I'm not one of those people that does very analytical drawings or paintings that, that has like I've got a, a friend at school who did a, a scene of her room, like a corner of her room. Mm-hmm. And beforehand, it was like an architectural sketch before she'd even started painting because it was like the ruler was out, you know? And and I'm just like, mm, that'll do. And then, like, very loose pencil. Eh, that's kind of a general shape that I want. Splats paint on it. And it, it doesn't, that doesn't always work so well for, like, this kind of, with the assignment. Because, like, I mean, it's art school, so you are you have leeway. You're allowed to, to be stylized and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going with, is making it stylized. But I don't know. It's just been stress. Um, and then, yeah, two papers that are also due on Monday. Wish me luck, guys. I need it. Yeah, you, you definitely have my most sincere condolences yeah. with all of that. But on the bright side, we got good news. Did we? I mean, you saw the new visual for the Laid Back I, Camp movie. That I did, and I need some Laid Back Camp right now. <laughs> yeah, so for those that haven't seen it, you should totally go look it up, because it's cute and it's adorable. So However, cute. 
Oh, it's so adorable. And also, we have a release date. It's getting released in July in eee! Japan. That's so exciting. That means we can probably expect that here in the coming wintry months, mm. which is the perfect time to watch anything laid back camp because you just want to get nice and cozy and hang out. Yeah. And then you get the vague inspiration to go outside for a bit and then decide that you're better off inside. Yeah, you get the <laughs> vague inspiration of, fuck that, it's too cold, I'm done. I'm done, I'm staying inside and gonna make a hot chocolate. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited for Layback Camp. I, it's probably one of my favorite shows, just because it's so, just, like, it's just like meditating. You know, it's you watch that and you feel better about everything. I mean, pretty much. Like, yeah. it's just such an easy watch to go through and enjoy also yeah so we got a new visual for the golf anime that's coming out next month mm. so i just sent that to you but yeah birdie wing girls golf story is officially going to release on april 5th that's i'm excited good. i've never been so excited for fucking golf, golf in my life <laughs> have you ever played golf i have how'd it go um, so for some reason, my short game is naturally okay. I can't drive to save my life. Mm -hmm. I have the natural ability to smack the person behind me with the balls that I drive. So yeah, no, That's no, talent. I, I will <laughs> gladly stick to tennis and video games. I, I, tennis is the only reason I go outside and touch grass. If it wasn't for tennis, I would solely stay inside and be a fucking otaku and play video games and watch anime and just say fuck the outside world yeah yeah i have played golf once with my mom and we had more fun driving the golf cart than playing golf itself i mean i enjoy like hanging out with the homies mm. and driving the golf cart and drinking a beer while the rest of them get plastered <laughs> yeah but also a beer and then water and sitting out in the fucking blazing sun just doesn't doesn't do it for me. Yeah, it's uh I don't know, it's one of those things where it's like not my not my vibe. Mini golf is way more fun. Uh definitely. There's fun shit to do and try to hit God, yeah. I love golf with friends. Yeah. Golf with friends is a great game. Enjoy that. That was that was some of the most fun shit that I think you and I did that's just lost. I don't know what happened to any of that footage. I think it's some of had. it's on one of my hard drives. I think I know where it is. Ah, uh, because that, that was just fun shit. That was great. Yeah, it was very fun. Do enjoy. I, <laughs> I played golf with one of the twins, and I have this weird thing where either I get it in like one or two or 15. There's no in between. <laughs> I I don't have that yeah, there's, issue. There's zero in between. It's either one or the other. Yeah, typically, like I said, my short game is actually good. So, and it's funny because anytime Walker and I are out of town together and there's a place to go play mini golf, mm. we have to go play. Mm -hmm. It's like a running thing. And we pretty much have a running back and forth going. If he'll win one, I win one. He'll win one, I win one. And I think currently he's up, so I'm due for my win the next time that we're all out playing mini golf. Yeah, you're gonna have to uh, have to beat him like three times in a row then, just for funsies. I mean, <laughs> I might as well. Maybe I should stop taking it easy and go like full anime protagonist mode. Yeah. Maybe this new golf anime will help with that. I think so. I think you're gonna learn some really good tips and tricks, um, and be able to push up your glasses and and get a good shine on the lenses. You know. Hell yeah, I'm down. That's yeah. it. That's all I've got for news. Other than the biggest piece of news mm. to come out of, I guess, technically today. Mm -hmm. I think my dress up darling is going to take my anime of the year. Interesting. I mean, it's still early, but yeah. I mean, so long as Cloverworks doesn't fuck it up, because <laughs> I will say that until the end of fucking time. But after what I watched today and I'm not even fully caught up, that show has stolen my fucking heart. Good to know. I adore that show Good so much. I can't wait for us to cover it in a few weeks because I'm I'm so excited. I can't wait. I am excited too. I mean, you're gonna love it just because it's food wars, but cosplay. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm here for it just because it's full rom com and also food wars, but cosplay. So it takes all the boxes for me. Yes. But that's it. That's all I got. Are we? Are we ready to AOT now? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to jump into this. So let's go. 
I I lied. I'm not ready. I closed my Wikipedia tab. <laughs> Rude. Uh, fuck. I'm, Just got I'm a terrible. history. I get it. Mm, Control H. But you, but you see, I'm already pulling it up on my phone, <laughs> so I'm, I'm very prepared. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'll start on my end then. Wahahaha! <laughs> I start 25 episodes. <laughs> Just, you know, first season, 25 episodes, just a small one, two core. Um, rated R or 17 plus, which I mean, not shocking at all. Uh, for, <laughs> what? No. <laughs> right? Um, my anime list has it here for violence and, profan- and profanity, which it makes sense. Uh, but one thing that made me chuckle was on Netflix, which is where I watched it. Um, it uh, labeled it as for nudity. <laughs> Which I get, because, but I also don't get, because one of the things about the Titans is that they don't have any genitals or anything, so the nudity is, like, muscle. <laughs> Which made me laugh a lot, um, because I was like, yeah, okay, it's not the gore and the blood and the, the like, people being eaten, it's, uh, it's muscle tissue, that's why we're gonna rate it. 17. I mean, it, it's pretty much Ken dolls and Barbie dolls. Like, that's it. Yeah, uh, which uh, very much amused me, so just thought I'd share that. <laughs> no, no, it's actually full-on nudity, because we see muscle and bone. Oh, it's, no. <laughs> it's muscle and bone, the most of the, the most nude you could possibly get. That's quite literally the most nude yeah. you could possibly get. Oh, this is a new level of scandalous. I see what you're <laughs> on to, Japan. <laughs> Take strip tease to a whole different level. Oh, damn. Right? <laughs> anyway, I thought I'd check, because that made me laugh. Oh, that's great. Um, and yeah, so my anime list has it rated an 8.52 out of 10. Anime Planet has it as a 4.36 out of 5, or an 8.72 out of 10. So, like, 8.5, 8. 8.6 for both. You know, to combine them. Very good, solid score. Drop rate, especially for a two core, is very good. At 2.5 five seven percent um that's very very good for a first season and a, and a 25 episode season i mean also considering how long this has been out as well considering mm. the first season released in 2013 so i mean that's not that's not bad yeah yeah very, uh, uh, very very decent uh yeah so uh opening theme oh, i haven't read this before so we're gonna sound it out <laughs> Guren <laughs> no Yumiya uh, by Link to Horizon for the first 13 episodes then Jiu no Tsubasa for, also by Link to Horizon for the last for episodes 14 to 25 for the ending themes we have Yutsu Kushiki Zan Koku na Sekai by Yoko Hikasa for episodes 1 through 13, and then Great Escape by Cinema Staff for episodes 14 onwards. Um, yeah. So, Core 1, both OP and ED are absolutely timeless in the anime community. Yes. Uh, you, they are, uh, you hear the first three notes and you know exactly what's going on. Now, granted, it's not the most timeless. We'll get into that here in a couple weeks whenever mm. we cover season two. Yeah. But this one is definitely, for me, this one sits at number three Mm -hmm. for core one. And then the second one, I think, sits at number six Mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, number six. Because the OP for fucking season four part one will forever sit at number seven because it's hot garbage. (laughs) But... Yeah, other than other than that, yeah, first one is timeless, always has been, and probably always will be. Mm-hmm. And even the ED, I really, really enjoy. Yeah. Attack on Titan has such a way with dealing with their OPs and EDs. Mm-hmm. And even the soundtracks to the general shows are absolutely fabulous. They do a fantastic job with it. And the animation on the first season Pretty much holds up to this day. Everything's kind of weird and wonky. I don't know if it's because I'm used to Mappa's art style at this point, as fucking weird as it is to say that. Yeah, the characters have a very specific style, and we're also seeing a lot of characters that are based on European people as opposed to Japanese people, because uh, that's the way that the show is is laid out. There is only one Japanese person in the show. Well, one Asian person, I think, like uh, East Asian. Technically two. Two, okay, yeah. Because uh, 
Mikasa and Levi. Right. Okay. Yeah. She's the, yeah, Mikasa's the lost female, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess nobody really thinks about Levi being that way and it's not really brought up, but that's also something to discuss. I think during season three, I think is whenever that becomes more of a prominent. Yeah. I think. But either way, like the because of that, the character designs are very different. Like you get a lot of different nose shapes, a lot of different um, like tones, and 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 facial structures are different. And and from typical anime, which mm-hmm. is it's very cool to see. It's very it's like I wouldn't say it's super like the uh, di- diverse because you don't get a lot of skin tone ranges. No. Like, you get some, like, I think with the commander of the scouts, but I don't even think it's so much skin tone as as it is kind of like a shading for tan. Yeah, it's like the first, like, five shades of foundation. (laughs) Like, yeah, like, it's not, there's not a lot of range there, but you do get some different facial structures than is typical in anime. So because of that, I think that the animation style is definitely more unique, and you could definitely pin Attack on Titan characters, not just from their fashion, because they're, they're, what they wear is very iconic, but um, also because of the facial structure, the way that they're designed, the way they're animated. I feel like if you saw them in street clothes, you could still very much tell that they were an Attack on Titan character. Yeah, and although I will say, they do get better about the skin tones and whatnot in Season 4. Mm-hmm. So that does get better. That is a that is a good thing. So yeah. we can we can definitely keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, that is. Damn it, I had something to go on about. Now I lost it. You lost it. Uh, the reason I why I think it. that we're bringing up the skin tone thing, though, for Attack on Titan specifically, is because of the way that the world is laid out. Um, it's not an uh, anime based in Japan for ja- like that's around Japanese people, you know, because it's like a all humans gathered together in one spot, you know kind of vibe uh it you are expecting more diversity that's why we bring it up anyways it at least for now at least well i didn't that's why like for season one (laughs) i know i know saying that makes it sound like you know that even saying that much because the way season one is laid out is like this is the entirety of humanity, you know? I want people to be able to watch more. Yeah. But <laughs> I want like, to give uh, them reason. I'm going to lead without actually leading. <laughs> I don't know. Also, I remember what I was going to say now. Okay. I cried. Did you? I did. I did not. It's for a very specific purpose that I'm not going to get into. Okay. Because it's a massive season four sport. Okay, so you're crying upon reflection. So it's, um, yeah, certain things that happen in season four and then being reintroduced to things. It just, it hit me hard, man. It hit me hard. I I never realized how much I miss this until I get reintroduced and I'm like, oh, my heart. Oh, I'm tearing up. (laughs) All of the sad. All of the sad. Just all all of the sad. Too Mm -hmm. much self-reflection. Do we have background? Yes, I did actually pull up background. I did my <laughs> job, maybe. <laughs> All right. So, Attack on Titan's manga was written by Hajime Isayama. Mm-hmm. It is a shonen because fucking duh. Because <laughs> duh. The manga had its original run from September 9th of 2009 until April 9th of 2021 for a total of 34 volumes and 139 chapters. Mm-hmm. Now, The anime began its original run in April 7th of 2013 and Mm -hmm. is currently running to this day for a grand total of, again, at present, as of March 5th of 2022, 83 episodes and 8 OVAs. Yeah. And the first season was directed by Tetsuru Araki, and he actually is the director for the first two cores of season one, season two, and I believe the first core of season three as well. They're the director of the first 59 episodes. Mm, Yeah. 
That's it. That's background. That's background. I feel like we should start saying the name in Japanese as well. So uh, it's Shingeki no Kyojin. Uh, let's see how long this sta- this keeps up because it's one of those things that I'm going to be like, yeah, we should do this. And then the next episode of the podcast, I don't. But there you go. <laughs> no, no. It, it's just going to be AOT. I don't even want to say okay. the whole name yeah. anymore. It's AOT. just AOT. It's AOT. the same with Jujutsu Kaisen. It's JJK at this point. <laughs> JJK. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it, uh, My hero is also just my hero. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We never even attempted the Boku no Hero Academia. It's just my hero. It's just my hero. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so quick synopsis, if you have lived under a rock and do not know what it's about. I I don't really get how you could be in the anime circuit and not have at least seen screenshots of Titans. I like, uh, But if somehow you haven't, it is centered around a young lad and... Kind of his two friends. I'm going to give it like the Harry Potter, Hermione, Ron trio vibe a little bit. It's the Shonen trio. It's like, the Shonen trio. Yeah. It's the, it's the Shonen trio. Yeah. It's very classic um, group. Anyway, so we're starting off. We have our main character, uh, Eren, who is uh, just a little lad who likes to live his little life. Um, when all of a sudden, big old flesh monsters named Titans... Um, attack the human world the human world is like surrounded by these walls of protection and because they have been forced into living within these walls um due to the titans that were a thing like 100 years ago and um they haven't like attacked human since so it's only that like the scouts that leave the the safety of the walls that ever actually encounter them so for the longest time like nobody knew Like, everyone kind of lived in peace and didn't really care about them, you know? It was like, ah, titans, those crazy things. Like, what are they, you know? Um, And uh, and then all of a sudden, things happen, titans come back. Ah, that's not a spoiler because, like, that's how the show works. (laughs) Otherwise, there would be no show. It would just be a slice of life. Um, and, (laughs) um, And so then it's about... Um, Eren and his friends figuring out how to fight off these titans and uh, what they truly are and joining the military forces and um, also like learning other characters, their backstories. Uh, and that's kind of the, the as much as I can tell you without there being any spoilers because there is so much content that happens very quickly right off the bat in this show. So, yeah. So, also, the biggest other takeaway from a synopsis is everybody fangirls over Levi. That's all you need to know. Yes. uh, (laughs) Yes. And, warning, not afraid to kill off characters. Uh, (laughs) What? No. No. Yeah. Um, So My heart still hurts. Yeah, don't get attached to anybody. Ever. Quite literally, no one. Yeah. At all. None. Um. Otherwise, you'll have a bad time. I'm still having a bad time. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So uh, let's put on that spoiler chicken hat and uh, jump into it. Hell yeah. So series starts off with our main trio. They're going about their day. Um, Nobody wants to join the military except Aaron. He's like, all right, I'm going to do it. Tells his parents. Parents are like, "Mm, no, shouldn't do that. And then his dad's like, I have a secret. Yes, dad's like, I have a secret. Here, take this key. And then we're going to completely forget about this key until fucking we season remember three. the key. But don't, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just don't, don't, don't worry about that. No, no, no. We'll, we'll get back to the key in season three. Yeah. Just, you you got to be r- real fucking patient. Yeah. Because season two is an entire, like, outside the manga detour that we don't like to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But, um, it, yeah. Where's I going with that? Oh yeah. So anyway, Dad's like, I've got a secret, but you got to be good mm. until I get back. But guess what? Dad's not coming back because giant Titan appears and kicks a fucking hole in the wall, and then everybody, including Aaron's mom, gets munched. Yeah, big munch. And this is the start of the revenge arc. Aaron, uh, I think he is twelve. No, he's like ten years old at this point because then two years and then he's twelve and then he signs up for the military at twelve because you either have to go farming or military, right? So he's fifteen during the rest of the show. At least for the first season. For the first season. Yeah. 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 Everybody gets munched. Everybody 
starts to retreat inside the second wall mm. until, boom, Armored Titan appears and is like, how about you go fuck yourself? I'm going to blow open this wall, too. And instead yeah. of just having an outlying district, because the way the walls are set up, you have Wall Rose, Wall Maria, and then Wall Cena, and then each of the walls have, like, outer outlying districts where they set up large amounts of population so that that way the Titans can, like, sense their body heat and then go yeah. towards them. And so that way they can set up cannons along the top of the wall, have them all gathered in one place, and then slaughter them. Yeah. Well, that's fine and all until the walls get busted, and then that's a shit ton of Titans breaking in at once that nobody really knows how to deal with because it's been a hundred years of peace. So yeah, yeah. Armored Titan busts a hole in the wall. Everybody's running away, trying to flee. People are still getting munched. But then also you get little little bitty tidbits of... Uh, well, I mean, for one, uh, Aaron magically ending up with his dad's key around his neck. That's not explained for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, that's the thing is, is this first season you get throughout the entire season, you get these dream flashbacks, flash forwards, like hit Aaron's brain is like, I, it's kind of, it feels a bit like, um, I don't know. Cause you don't. At this point, you don't know if what he's seeing is real or if what he's seeing is just like nightmares or premonitions or like because he's already been through so much trauma, right? So, I mean, some of them happen before, no, after trauma. They all happen after trauma. So he's been through trauma. So you're like, oh, I don't really know what's going on with this. Um, but you start to see them even within this season. You start to see them coming true or uh, like or proof that they did actually happen. So the season or really the series opens with like tiny bits of like flashbacks or like Aaron dreaming. And the episode is titled to you in 2000 years. Yeah. So the entire show is pretty much foreshadowing from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And then I, Whenever we cover season four, I have some other stuff to discuss because that I love the full circle of everything, but we'll get to that anyway. So, yeah, big munch. Everybody has to do farm labor in unfarmable areas because why? Why not? And then training time. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a big famine. People are dying. And at this point as well, they also send out something like, what was it? A hundred thousand people basically to their deaths in a recovery mission that isn't actually a recovery mission. And this is what kind of gives, uh, like Armin and a couple of the others motivation to do the things that they then do in the future. Is yeah. So like, they, they send out 250,000 people on a suicide yeah. mission to try to retake, uh, Shiganjina, which is the area that was lost inside of Wall Rove. Yeah. And out of 250,000 people, only 100 came back. Yeah. And they it lost was... 20% of the entire pop population of humanity. Yeah. Um, and it was because there was famine and they needed to get rid of people. Um, and uh, yeah, that was... They, they did it by by just sacrificing people. The the way that they do this, so the creator of Attack on Titan has a very, like, nationalist view on mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the stuff gives you, like, hardcore, like, just, they take a lot from history. Like, a lot of the architecture is European, like, more yeah. specifically, like, a city in Germany, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And they pull yeah. a lot from world history. And a lot of the show gives you like solid World War II vibes. Yeah, you see a lot of a lot of European uh, influence, in, not just in Germany, but you get Italy vibes as well, who were also on that side in, in um, the World War, Second World War. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you definitely get it from, from like clothing. You get it from architecture. You get it from storylines. It's the whole show is a huge commentary on government actions that can be applied to current affairs, not just to the history as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, there's definitely a huge historical element. Yeah. Yeah. And especially in later seasons, I think season three, things get very political. Mm -hmm. 
And it's very much like a very realistic take on real world politics. And we don't say that in a way to be like, hey, you know, you shouldn't watch this because it gets political and it kind of breaks your immersion. But it kind of gives you like real insight on how governments react to certain things and how like I have about spoiled something. So I'm a bite my tongue. <laughs> But just like how certain situations are handled and set up and all that other kind of stuff. Yeah, I wouldn't even say that it necessarily breaks your immersion in the show. Because while you're watching, I didn't find that I was thinking about, like, I mean, I was thinking about current affairs while I was watching it this time. But because obviously a lot of stuff has been happening in the current affairs to where it's very relatable to this with the Ukraine and everything. Mm -hmm. Um, But. The first couple of times I watched it, I wasn't necessarily thinking about that whilst watching the show, but upon reflection or like after the show, like after you watch an episode, you definitely have those moments of like, oh, I get it, you know, or yeah. like you could even have that during the show, but it doesn't like, it's not like a promise, like it's not a prominent thought. It's just something that kind of sits in the background of your mind. Mm -hmm. Well, as someone who studied a lot of world history through high school and what little college I took. I'm fascinated by that kind of history and being able to see comparisons in a show like this and the way they pull like certain ideologies and actions and stuff from world history and incorporate it in here to where you can see the way things like that play out. To me, that kind of stuff is fascinating and I love that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's just, it's just kind of part of it. Yeah. But yeah. So episode three training arc. Yeah, so with this, uh, I the one thing that I thought was very interesting was the the people that have already seen what the Titans can do, like they weren't interrogated the same way that everybody else was because they were, the people were like, "There's nothing we can do to intimidate them." They've seen the worst of the worst, mm -hmm. and that was a very like that moment kind of put it into perspective, I guess, how much this like i mean obviously you know it's affected them their children it's affected them um and but like in comparison to all of the other kids you see the direct comparison of like the kids that saw it and then the kids that didn't and just their behavior was very clear mm -hmm. also we get introduced to potato girl the only character in this entire show that fucking matters yes and i love how she's referred to as potato girl in the sub i love it so much <laughs> also huge 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 major bits of foreshadowing that again i'm surprised none of the fucking characters picked up on in the show mm. whenever aaron hit his head he was steaming yeah like just and that was a lot of steam coming off his head like how <laughs> yeah uh and and we're also introduced to some characters that become very prominent throughout the rest of the show uh pretty much everyone who is within that is introduced within the third uh episode and the fourth episode of, of like the training montages become prominent members of the like like the team later mm -hmm. on. Um, Jean, Connie, Reiner, Bertolt, um, Emir, Historia, and Sasha are pretty much the biggest names going forward that you're kind of introduced to. And Annie in the fourth episode as well. Oh yeah, I forgot about Annie. Yeah, well, it's kind of important. I mean... For this season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of key uh, figure. Uh, I mean, again, uh, I don't know how I could forget, considering, you know, just huge plot point for the last half of the fucking season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, yeah. the whole last half of the season's pretty much about her, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. No biggie. Yeah, and... and uh, uh... So it's just kind of training montages and um, getting to know a lot of background stuff. Throughout this show, the little like advert break cards are um, basically describing how the world works. So some of them are like fun, just like information on like horses and carriages and stuff. But some of it's like, this is how the walls work. This is how the gear works. Like this, you know, some of them are like more important to like actually explain how the like the, the logistics of everything and some of them give you information on titans that you will not get anywhere else so if you don't actually pay attention to those yeah there's lore that you're going to lose out on that comes up in later seasons like seasons three and four yeah if you don't pay attention you're not gonna get it sorry 
Yeah, so there's little sneak peeks. So pay attention to those. Yeah, pay attention in class, everybody. Yeah, get out your notebook and pencil. Number two pencil. That's one that I had to translate in my brain a lot when I first emigrated. Oh. It was uh, eraser, because that's not what they're called in the UK. Izawa? Eraser, you know, like the eraser. No, no, Izawa from My Hero. You raised her oh. head. True. Yeah, I had to translate him. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, no, Titans called... attack again. <laughs> they're called rubbers in the UK, which doesn't translate well. Mm, nah, it's fine. It's not fine, wait, wait, I promise it, what, you. What about that's not going to translate properly? I don't get it. Uh, for those of you who don't live in North America that are listening, rubber in North America is slang for a condom. Um, what? No, I had yeah. no idea. Right? Yeah. So, small, fresh off the boat immigrant child coming to this country, going to school. Being in like, middle hey, school, in of middle all school. times. Yeah, in that's, that's a great time to go and start asking people for a rubber. Hey, can I borrow a rubber? Nope. That, yeah, that was one that I very quickly adapted to. There were others that, took, <laughs> others that took time, but that one was like, no, get it right now. Yeah, yeah, that, that's one of those you would need to learn immediately, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <sighs> so, Titans attack again. Titans attack again, um, and this time... Uh, they're very it's... specific in who they're going after. Yes. Or what they're going after this time rather yes and this is also for the emotional team building side of things this is also the uh starting bonds of the group where there was tension beforehand Mm -hmm. and also this is prime example of when not to get attached to characters because our main character gets fucking munched and that's it end of the show the rest of the series is uh just flashbacks and OVAs. And I mean, it could follow me, because I'm fine with that. Yeah, because our main character dies, so. Yeah, dude gets munched. Yeah, main character's dead, he loses his arm, loses his leg, then gets swallowed. Um, Armin is psychologically scarred for the rest of the show, Mikasa blames herself, it's a fun time. Yeah, the whole show ends, uh, and yeah, so it's just, it's just um, OVAs and and repeats for the rest of the four seasons. I mean, that's fine. It's whatever. Yeah. Show's over. Yep. Podcast over now, too. Goodbye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it keeps going. Yeah, so Aaron gets munched. That ends out that, ep- that episode. Next episode, everybody's trying to come to terms with what happened. But also, they're starting to run out of fuel because the way their ODM gear works is it's powered by CO2. Yeah. And once that CO2's out, there's no way they're getting back inside the walls. So they start to run out of materials. All seems lost, except for there's a very weird abnormal titan that comes busting out of nowhere and starts punching other titans in the face. Yeah, I uh, wonder who that could be. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and, and we're also getting a parallel story at the same time of the... Um, uh, like the command tower and everything, we're starting to see more of the government's corruption in the lower levels. Um, we're starting to see higher up commanders and like generals and people, um, basically like killing everybody by being scared themselves and and then shutting things down before they're supposed to happen. And um, uh, that's like a very real storyline that happens consistently throughout. Is these people that haven't yet been exposed to the titans because obviously with the walls you've got layer by layer by layer by layer um and uh each new layer that gets exposed it's their first time ever seeing a titan um and uh then so then you have this like restart of these adults that have never been exposed to it and then these kids having to to sacrifice themselves because these adults are trying to protect their own hineys but also they bring up a very valid point in that mm-hmm. the only recruits that are allowed to become military police mm-hmm. are the top 10 recruits. Yeah. And yet they're all being trained to kill Titans. 
which yeah. is again another very real scenario and that the people that you would want the most on the front lines are going to be the people that the king is going to choose for themselves because they obviously want the best warriors to protect them and everybody else is just expendable and can fuck off. Yeah, and it's also one of those situations of is the king, you know, biting their nose off to spite their face because they're taking people that have no actual battle training. They've only done, you know, like they have they've haven't, they've never boxed in the ring. They've only done it in the gym, you know. It's like, so, here's some hand-to-hand combat drills, but that's that's it. Yeah, they've never actually faced a Titan. And people don't know how they're going to react in situations until they've been in the situation themselves. So it's kind of one of those things where, like, if I was the king, that's not how I would run it, because I would want, like, the the scouts that have gone out and done the shit to then be like, okay, you want to retire? You can retire in my military police force, you know? Mm-hmm. But, obviously, that's not how it works. So. No. No. All right. So, giant, uh, not giant, but new abnormal titan starts beating the shit out of other titans, makes its way to HQ, where it beats the shit out of the titans that are there to help clear up HQ, mm. while our main squad of the rest of the Expendables go inside and clear out the titans that are on the inside of HQ, so that way they can get their supply orders back. Mm-hmm. And then... Uh oh, abnormal titans had his arms munched off and it collapses. Who comes out? Who is it? Tell us. Ah, uh, does it just happen to so be our main character? What? No. That that is some fucking ridiculous plot armor. Who would have suspected <laughs> our main character thought? gets munched in episode four, and then two episodes later he reappears in the abnormal titan, even though it fucking looks very, very similar? <gasps> Shock. I'm stunned. Never, um, never, never would have had any sort of idea whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. Um, and uh, this kind of changes everything. Because up until this point, uh, they had believed Titans to be separate entities. And now it is kind of known that they're controlled by humans. Or at least some of them are. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So. Aaron, Armin, and Mikasa are all held at gunpoint. Dude tries to um, give them a moment to explain themselves, but not really. Shoots a cannonball. Aaron turns back into a titan to stop the cannonball, because of course he fucking does. Yeah. And And Armin becomes best boy and defends everybody. Yeah. Also, really, really, really long scene hidden in steam, despite the fact that the steam dissipates from all other scenes very quickly. So it's just like... Steam world for an hour. Um, also, can we talk about how, and this is, I can't consider this a spoiler just because it's very abnormal how it happens, hmm. but the Titan that Aaron produces whenever he goes to stop the cannonball is not his Titan. Hmm. I don't know if that was just a design flaw. I don't know what that issue was, but that was not the attack Titan at all. Hmm. So I'm very confused by that. I uh, I don't know. I don't know, mate. I don't I don't know either. And again, this I don't think this is me reading into it too much just because of everything, but it's it's very actually I have an idea, but I'm a shut up. Okay. We also get some background previously in a different episode, like further back that we didn't talk about about Mikasa um and Aaron uh about how they killed three people when they were nine years old because Mikasa was gonna get sold to slavery yeah she was gonna get sold on the black market inside the capital because yeah. you know that's that's a thing that's a thing and then Aaron's like all right fuck you guys kills two of them and then he starts getting choked and then Mikasa's like mm, can't have that that's my boyfriend stab Yes, uh, and also so, scarf. Also <laughs> scarf. Yeah. So the, this is kind of uh, just more background. It does come back at a later time, uh, but it's yeah, it's more of just like the initial bonding of these two characters, and uh, also backs up Aaron's like personality of just I will do what it takes to do what I need to do, and that is consistent throughout. It's probably his biggest trait, and it's also the thing that like they talk about when he was going through his military training of like he's not very good at doing 
physical or like physical exercise or like the textbook stuff. He's not the smartest um, person or the strongest person, but his determination and his willingness to just get shit done is why he ends up doing so well. Yep. All this man wants is to be free of the walls and just be able to go see the sea. That's yeah. all this man wants. And he will do whatever it takes. I do to want do it. to be beside the seaside. Is that an English thing? Do you not know that? Nope. Not okay. at all. <laughs> Some people will get that. Others won't. <laughs> <laughs> Niche meme. Uh. But yeah, so Armin convinces the military to, or more specifically, Commander Pixis, who's the commander of the entire like southern brigade of the military mm. that Aaron can actually use his Titan abilities to help them take back Trost by making him pick up a giant boulder. But can he actually pick up the boulder? No, he's going to try to smash Mikasa instead. Yes. Uh, which... And also smash himself in the face because big punch. <laughs> because big punch. And then he decides to have a nap for a while. Yeah, just big nap so we can get character building from everybody else. But wait, yeah. nope, never mind. He pick up Boulder. He put Boulder down. Yeah, he picked things up and puts them down again. Uh, and uh, then everyone's like, huh, you may be useful, but you also may not because you're scary. But also you're useful uh so what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw you in prison take you to court and then we're gonna have levi kick the absolute dog shit out of this man and we're gonna start seeing religious folks get more and more and more and more aggressive and their hold over the government get more and more prominent mm -hmm. yeah which i completely forgot was a plot point is plot point it it is a plot point i think it's an even bigger plot point, I think, in season two, if I'm mm. not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But again, I completely forgot that was a major plot point. Yeah. Very, very strange. Yeah. So these religious folks uh, believe that the walls were placed down by the gods or goddesses because they're named after girls. Um, and that they should, you should worship the walls. And if you alter the walls in any way, you are like insulting the goddesses so when they're like we should fix up the gates so that we don't have them anymore and only live inside the walls they're like no keep the gates and then armored titans are like mm, we're gonna make these gates a little bit bigger um and uh then everyone else is like ah we're being eaten by titans you know <laughs> so how about instead of a gate i raise you a hole <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Like you want it to, to open and close? I prefer just open. Yeah, that, I mean, you know, my foot can easily fit through this hole. Yeah. Although, they're never foot-shaped holes. They're, like, perfectly, like, tunnel-shaped. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, like, moat-shaped, like the yeah. half oval. <laughs> yeah, semicircle. Yeah, just moat yeah. drawbridge type thing. Yeah, it's very interesting for a footprint. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I I would love for it to be like a comic size like footprint <laughs> With the toes. where you see the toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, I need this in my life, please mm. and thanks. Yeah. Uh so our main homies join the scouts. Mm-hmm. And then now they're going to go try to retake the walls. And this is where we get like military formation training and whatnot. Yeah. And more secret cards that tell you more about training as well. So pay attention. Yeah. And then what's this? A female Titan appears. Yeah. What? There has never been a female Titan before. And she's not just a female Titan. She's also uh, like conscious and intelligent and so they very quickly put two and two together that this is a human manned titan. And they're just like, oh, so now we have the armored titan, we got the colossal titan, and now we've got this one. And yet people are also like, hmm, she acting real sus, like real, real sus. familiar. Yeah, and, and responding to specific nicknames that only people in certain squadrons would know. And she also looks very familiar to someone who has a very distinct face. And also someone with a very distinct fighting style. Who was recently featured with that fighting style very heavily in a previous episode. But yeah. then we'll we'll get back to that because... We'll Aaron gets kidnapped. 
Yes. Yes. So the the first of many times the this fa- poor boy is kidnapped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just just snatched. He's snatched out of his own body. So yeah, our our boy gets snatched, but then oh wait, Mika's uh to the rescue because of course. Mm-hmm. But also they find out that they have a traitor among their midst as well. Yes. Some, somebody be trying to help out the female titan. Yeah. Uh oh, and we had uh, uh there there be two there be two other titans that uh they captured that then did not live. Yeah, they were killed by someone who who's to say who they who, were who my killed st- by. Stomach Chan is back. Stomach Chan. Did you not eat before we did this? No. For shame. I For was, shame. I was painting. Uh huh. Yeah. For shame. You need you need to go get ramen or something. Yeah. How are your noodles the other day? By the way, noodles were so good. I'm jealous. So good. So 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 good. Um. What were we talking about? Oh yeah, Aaron getting snatched. Yeah. So Aaron gets snatched, but gets released. Mm. Um. Female Titan gets away. Yeah. But then plans are concocted on how to try to catch Female Titan. Yeah. Yeah. Gee, I wonder who it is. <laughs> no, no clue. No clue who that who it be. It's Mikasa. Um, uh, that's a lie. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, and just like small things that I thought were really, really interesting throughout this time period. Like you get some flashbacks to um, during when Aaron was first put into the scout group. And he like tries to pick up a teaspoon and accidentally transforms into Triton. We also learn more about his transformation, the fact that he has to inflict self-harm and that he has to have a clear goal in mind to be able to transform because he tried to transform but couldn't. And then he goes to reach and pick up a teaspoon and that's when he transforms. And then everyone's like, ah, and he's like, I didn't mean to. Um, Aaron's Titan transformations are like puberty. Very yeah, strange. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like <laughs> voice cracks, but transformation. Oh, very, very odd. Can you hear that? Yes. My stomach is so loud. I'm hungry. All right, speed run. <laughs> no, it's okay. Right? Yeah, they have to lead out. They have to lead out the female titan. So they, they set a trap. Yeah, they set a trap. So they are leading a convoy of trying to get uh, Aaron away from the military police. Everybody's. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Everybody's in on this, but you find that out a little bit later in the season. Yeah. So they lead a military convoy because they know there's traitors amongst their mitts. And so they go to Annie and they're like, hey, will you help us out with this? Like, we need somebody from the military police to kind of help keep everybody off our backs. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, hey, follow us into this basement or this like underground tunnel. Like, yeah, yeah, tunnel area. And she's like, no, 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 I'm not going down there. And then everybody's like, but but why not? Come on, we gotta we gotta go. And she's like, nah, I don't think so. And then they all jump her. But wait, she's like, I got this and transforms. And then Aaron, being a big bitch baby, refuses to transform because he doesn't want to fight his friend. Yeah. So Aaron was kind of uh the last one to pick up on the fact that it was Annie, despite the fact that earlier on when they were in the big forest of big trees, um, and he's just about to get his head blown off, he says, ah, and then gets his head blown off. And so you're pretty much like, oh, he's saying Annie, he's figured out who it is. Uh, but no, or unless he forgets, I don't know. Um, but also he's in Titan form. So is he actually talking? Like, cause they can't really talk in Titan form, but also like, it sounds like he's going to say Annie, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, so they, yeah, they figure out that it's someone from the the military police division, um, and and so they set a trap for everything. Annie transforms, big fight scene. Aaron's sad, um, and is sad boy for a while till he gets crushed by a pile of rocks, and then is sad for a bit longer until then he finally transforms, because you know, getting crushed by a pile of rocks helps you change your mind sometimes. Uh, I mean, that is some serious plot development that needs to take place to be able to transform into a giant fighting titan. But that's, yeah. that. you know, some people just need that little bit of extra nudge, <laughs> I guess. <Yeah. laughs> just a little push, you know? Just, just, just a little bit. Or yeah. a little smush. <laughs> oh, yeah, that too. Uh, 
And, so yeah, uh, Aaron and... transform. He fight. Mm -hmm. He lose because Annie's a badass fighter. But wait, Mikasa and Levi to the rescue again. But also not really because Annie turned into shiny rock. Yeah. Well, he. He kind of does does and doesn't lose. He loses control of himself because he gets real mad um, and then has a big fight and then is about to smash her head in and then gets sad about the fact that she's crying. Um, well, he's about to eat her. Um, and then and then she turns into a rock. God, that could have solved so many problems. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, whilst all of this is happening, there is a kind of a standoff between the military police and the scout team, because the military police are very, very corrupt, very self-absorbed, um, and very, like, they don't believe in attacking the Titans, you know? They're very much like, a, we'll just let them live outside the walls and do their own thing, except they're not outside the walls anymore, but they are too scared and or, um, like, not into it to, like, give a shit. Like, they're very corrupt. Um, and so uh, the leader of the scout team is just like, okay, well, if you're going to kill me, then if you're going to, because I've done all this behind the scenes and illegally and everything, if you're going to kill me, then that means you're in charge. So go for it. And starts like giving him, <laughs> giving him the instructions of how to lead everybody against these Titans. And the guy's like, whoa, 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 I'm just going to arrest you instead. Pretty much. Yeah. It's like, wait, don't give me, don't give me, don't put me in charge. What? Um, but yeah, uh, and then actually because um, they managed to, in a sense, capture, well, they did capture the female Titan, but like also she's encased in rock, so they don't get anything out of her. Um, that kind of puts them even. The Scout Regiment isn't like ahead of anything, but they're also not like all going to be arrested like they were previously. Pretty much. Um, and yeah, so they, like, summarization, they didn't get to retake the place where the basement is. So that didn't work. Um, they lost like oh, thousands of soldiers, and it is blatantly stated that they're going to lose thousands more. Military police is very, very corrupt. Scout troop can only really rely on scout troop. Religious people are crazy. <laughs> Not just in the anime in general. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Kitty! Sure, you are. <laughs> we are religious. And? Well, it's true, you are crazy. <laughs> Fair point, okay. <laughs> Your point's made, it's sustained. <laughs> um, yeah, but not that kind of crazy. I mean, some are, but like... Uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, and Marco's dead, also. But like, Marco was dead a while ago. Marco was dead a while ago. I mean, he... I mean, sometimes you just have a tendency to like halfway forget about him. Yeah, and then they're like, oh, do you remember he died? They do that a lot for a lot of people. It's like, oh, this one person died that you were introduced to briefly and they cracked a joke and made you smile and now they're dead. Um, so we're going to just like, ah, oh, here, they died again. Like, here you go, refresh, they died. Same with um, uh, like the scout group that was originally with Aaron when he was doing his mission through the trees. They're like, ah, oh, mm -hmm. they're dead. And then like a few episodes later, they're like, mm, here's their body being thrown up of a cart. Extra dead. Um, you know. Just in case you forgot that they died. Also, you remember all these other people that died? Yeah, that... That was fun. Yeah. Uh, so it's very much stated from, like, episode two. But don't get attached to anybody, because they're probably going to die. I mean, episode one with Aaron's mom. True. It ends with one of the biggest monches of the season. Yeah. And uh, a, a monch that has been referenced and memed. And it's uh, unfortunate it's been memed, but it has been. Um, for years now. Yep, pretty much. Yeah. I would argue that that's, like one of the most prominent mantras to come out of Attack on Titan, if not the most prominent mantra. Mm, I mean, as far as mantras go, yeah, that's probably the biggest mantra. Mm. As far as overall deaths go in the show, it's debatable. Mm. Big mantra. Big mantra. Okay, so with that, the it's season pretty much one season is done. One. Yeah. yeah. Annie's a crystal, a lot of people died. Aaron is like, hmm, I don't know what to do with my life anymore. And we know that they need to go to a basement. And good luck with that. Yeah. And then Levi's a neat freak. Mikasa and Armin are still Mikasa and Armin. Yeah. Uh... That's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of it. Season two shit gets more cray, but we'll get there in like a week or two. Yeah. Very last bit of the episode is them declaring war on all of the hidden titans. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. What do you give I it? Give, I give it like an eight. An eight. I think that's very that's very fair. I'm I'm kind of with you there at the eight. Uh, I what would I change? Hmm. What could improve on? I don't. I don't know if there's really anything that can be improved on. The pacing on everything is done extremely well. Yeah. Everything like the OPs and EDs suit the show to a T. The soundtrack is exceptional, especially with big like plot twists and whatnot. Mm. The way they set that up with the soundtracks and whatnot are really good. And even the plot twists and whatnot that are coming in later seasons do an even better job of that. But strictly for season one, I don't think there's really anything I would change. Yeah, I'm trying to think as well. I really like the level of like depression to then like not necessarily comedic relief because there isn't a lot of that, but just like leveling out of intensity so that you have mm-hmm. this really good um flow. The show's really well done in that way. Like it's yeah, not it's very well paced. Yeah, I don't feel like it ever gets um so you know how sometimes you're watching something and it's so heavy so long to the point where you're like i don't want to watch anymore because i just feel upset you know your line april that's one of them it's like it's like (laughs) i'm i'm done i like i'm drained you know and this show doesn't Mm -hmm. ever at least at this season doesn't get to that point and i think that's a good thing because especially for a first season a lot of the time you're not attached enough to characters to go into all of that heavy stuff like right away and it's a heavy Mm -hmm. show anyway so you know what i mean yeah um I think that the the level of foreshadowing is really good. I like the fact that you have to pay attention while watching the show. Uh, uh, I don't, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that some moments felt a little long, but also I think that's just the genre, you know? Yeah, it's a shonen. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, it is very much a shonen, and they're trying to drag out things as much as they could, because as is typical with shonens, the more they can drag it out, the more time it gives them to get the manga done and updated. Mm-hmm. So I I can kind of see that. So it it makes sense. The pacing is the pacing is going to be the pacing. Unfortunately, there's no way around that. Yeah, I, I'm with you at an eight. I think an eight's good. Yeah, but again, there's nothing I would change because the way the show has a way of taking everything full circle. Yeah, I wouldn't want to change anything just because the way that everything is kind of set up going forward. Yeah, I agree. I feel, mm, I don't know. I'm tr- I, like I'm trying to think of anything that I would improve upon it to give it that nine or that ten. But I, f- I feel, I like, feel like we don't have the strongest nostalgia for it. Like mm. it still hits hard because it's Attack on Titan, but it's not that true level of nostalgia to kind of push it over. Because I feel like that's what AOT needs mm-hmm. to become a ten. It's like that pure nostalgia level, mm-hmm. or you know us not to have a podcast to where we don't have podcast brain to where we just want to sit and critique everything because that's what we do yeah 100 percent. um i don't know i feel like yeah i mean maybe you could have done like a bit different on the big reveal of like who annie was and everything but like i feel like that also might just be the fact that i'm not watching this for the first time so i'm not experiencing the big reveal you know yeah a lot of the, but also for me, it's kind of overshadowed because of the big reveals that take place in the next season. Mm. Like that to me just felt bigger mm. to where the one with Annie, like, it's like, cool. Like she's the female Titan, but also there's very few people who that could actually be mm. like the only two people that technically fit the build for the female Titan is Annie and Historia. Those are the only two blonde bitches on the t- the squad mm. and it's not going to be historia because emir's shoved so far up her ass mm. <laughs> so that that can't be that yeah so i mean i do like the investigation of the show though like how we talked with demon slayer about how we kind of enjoyed the investigating bits yeah it's, it's very mystery-esque yeah which really makes me want to have us cover death note because i'm down for a good like thriller mystery yeah yeah, I and also I, I haven't I, watched Death Note in years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we should do that. Or or I'll do you one better. We should cover the live action Death Note. <laughs> Just yeah. kidding. I can't subject myself to that again. Well, I mean, we've I, we've watched some live actions now. I'm still curious about that live action food was. I said I was gonna look into it, but I didn't because I'm bad. But you're also bad that this week for this not doing homework, so 
you know. Look, okay, Elden Ring is consuming my life. At this point, I only have Elden Ring and then moments in between Elden Ring. That's how I classify everything. <laughs> Sorry, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, girlfriend. Uh, she's back home visiting family right now, so I'm... Mm-hmm, sure. <laughs> Sorry, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, girlfriend. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, so okay. That, that everything that that's, all we got? That's kind of everything that I've got. I'm excited we... to dive into the second season. I'm excited as well. Yeah, so, um, Blue, she pretty cool. She she pretty fancy. She got <laughs> Instagram and Twitter at Blue Lavender. STM, you should definitely go follow her Instagram because she posts life updates, art updates, all that fancy stuff. Also, she has an Instagram for Tilly. Although it doesn't get updated right now, you can still see adorable doggo pictures. Everybody needs adorable doggo pictures in their life right now. So go go check out all those socials. Those are fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Tilly lives in a different province than me right now, so I can't take pictures of it. Um, and she's tubby. What's a province? <laughs> it's like a state, but fancy. Um, mm, I see. Uh, yeah, she's tubby right now, so I've been. She's she's on a diet. Uh, <laughs> she put on some some extra winter warmth. Winter weight. Winter I love weight. it. Yeah, that that's that's what I am. I'm not fat. I just have winter weight. You just have hibernation weight. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, Brad, he does things, especially on the Twitch thing. Um, so check out the Twitch. Uh, at Brad Carter Gaming. He's also on Instagram at Brad Carter Gaming as well. Uh, for the podcast, we have lots of different things. You can find us at BNB Anime on like everything all the time for just the funsies on the Instagram, on the Twitter, on the YouTube, um, and on the website at www.bnbanime.com. If you are listening to this on the YouTube, you are one week behind. Mwah, ha, 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 evil. Uh, because the video episodes go up um one week after the straight audio ones on like apple Podcasts, spotify all that kinds of stuff as well so be aware of that if you want to listen as soon as it drops head on over to those and hit follow um for yeah your your podcast listening platforms that be everything? Everything. that's everything cool so thank you all so much for listening blue and i greatly appreciate it next week we got aot season two so stay tuned for more aot And then the week after that, you get me going Mm -hmm. it alone for JJK Zero. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to going back to Knoxville and go seeing a movie with the homies. Mm -hmm. But until then, we'll catch y'all next time. Bye-bye. Bye.